a hilly peninsula commanding one of North America's great natural harbors. In 1630, English colonists named it for the seaport from which they had departed. Their goal, to build a shining city upon a hill. Governor John Winthrop declared, the eyes of all people are upon us. And 360 years later, they still are. Beyond its modern glass, steel, and granite towers is a city older than the country it helped to create. This is a small city of distinct neighborhoods and colleges. Rich in history and culture, it is one of the most livable cities in the United States. Hello, I'm Don McGowan. Welcome to Travel Travel. Welcome to Boston. Located on the eastern seaboard of the United States, Boston is the capital of New England. Boston is the elegance of the posh Beacon Hill district and the pleasure of a stroll on the common. Boston is home to the Boston Pops and the bar that inspired the TV series Cheers. Boston is a seafood lover's paradise. Boston is the colorful characters you meet at Fenway Park. Peanut, ketchup, pistachios, ketchup, flesh roast, peanut here. But most of all, Boston is the cradle of the American Revolution. And more than anything else, it's that legacy that makes Boston a special place 200 years later. A silversmith named Paul Revere and his horse rode into American history. You can still visit Paul Revere's house today, but the events of the American Revolution began long before his famous midnight ride. My guide was Norman Pitcairn James, whose ancestor played a key role at the Battle of Bunker Hill. Don, right here in the middle of all this traffic, it's hard to believe with these cars whizzing by, but this is the site of the Boston Massacre, March of 1770, the first significant event that led up to our revolution. But the Patriots started it by insulting a British officer. No, 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 you've got to understand. The British officer, number one, had not paid his barber's bill, and that's what really started the incident. But there were other problems. All of your British soldiers were being barracked in our homes, your British soldiers were taking work from us because you weren't paying them a living wage. And finally, they were being offensive to our ladies. <laughs> Wait a minute. Five killed. That's not a massacre. Five killed. Maybe you don't think it's a massacre, but Sam Adams called it that, and that's the phrase that everyone remembers. Sorry. Time to switch my allegiance. I better make it clear that they're not my British. And the Old South Meeting House is the perfect place to do it. The Boston Massacre and other revolutionary events were discussed at public meetings here. The tea tax. It was another punitive measure inflicted upon the colonists by the British. Thousands of patriots gathered here to rally against the tea tax. And after hours of debate, Samuel Adams gave the signal that launched a very unusual party at Boston Harbor. It was the Boston Tea Party. The harbor has changed, but the memory of the tea party lives on. Aboard a replica of one of the ships involved, tourists and school children reenact the events of December 16, 1773. Death to tyranny! Yeah! And death to the British! Yeah! Hey! Some say Paul Revere was among those who participated in the Boston Tea Party, but we can't be sure. We do know what he did 16 months later. Two lanterns hung in the steeple of the Old North Church signal the direction in which British troops were marching on Concord. Several riders set out on horseback to warn American patriots at Lexington. But it was Paul Revere who was immortalized in the Longfellow poem. Captain Parker! We're Captain Parker! A ragtag band of militiamen fired the shot heard round the world. The War of Independence had begun, but it had all started back in Boston at sites tourists can still visit today. 
all these sites can be found by walking a red line on the sidewalk. It meanders past 16 of Boston's most famous historic landmarks. It's called the Freedom Trail. You can walk the trail, of course, or take an early American form of transportation, the trolley. But Boston is much more than just a museum to the revolution. With its new condos and monuments to commerce, you know Boston is undergoing a grand civic renewal. And someone asked recently, when will the developers fill in the harbor? But the new Boston does sit comfortably, and I think proudly in harmony with the Boston of Paul Revere and John Hancock. Pity the British had to lose it all. Coming up next, Boston landmarks of a different sort. Everything from Harvard University to the Cheers Bar. Plus, what makes Quincy Market special. Not exactly what you think of when you think of Boston's historic sites. For decades, there was little new construction in Boston, but all that has changed in the last 20 to 30 years. As in most cities, skyscrapers and gentrification have their critics, but everyone agrees the transformation of this important part of Boston is a model of its kind. This building has been a form for public speakers from Samuel Adams to John F. Kennedy. Its name is spelled this way. Here in Boston, it's pronounced Spaniel Hall. Just a few steps away is a site no visitor should miss. Quincy Market. Beneath the classic dome, merchants have plied their trade since 1826. This is a busy place where you can buy food of every sort, thanks to a renovation in the 1970s that rescued the market from disrepair. They say the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And if you're still hungry, the Union Oyster House is nearby. It is the oldest restaurant in Boston and the oldest restaurant in continuous service in the United States. Here at the Oyster Bar, Daniel Webster, when he was not nation building, was a regular shucker. In those days, he paid 15 cents for a dozen oysters. Today, 12.50 will get you 12. This establishment has not been yuppified. There are no hanging ferns, just a wide variety of seafood. Upstairs, the most historic part of the building. Louis Philippe, who later became king of France, lived in exile here in 1796. He supported himself by giving French lessons to wealthy Bostonians. And a visit to Harvard should satisfy your intellectual hunger. You might call it food for thought. There are over 50 colleges and universities in the Boston area. Harvard, Tufts, and MIT are located here in Cambridge. Boston is the most exciting student center anywhere. Each year, thousands of students arrive here and they fall in love with the city, much of the chagrin of recruiters from major New York companies. Graduates are reluctant to leave. So Boston has the best educated taxi drivers and bookstore clerks. Stroll around the campus and soak up the atmosphere. Education was one of the principal concerns of the Puritans who founded Boston. Harvard College was established in 1636 and remained the only college in the New World until 1693. The buildings in Harvard Yard date from the 18th and 19th centuries. If you're a student who cannot afford a hotel or don't know anyone in town, you can make friends in a few minutes by hanging out here in Harvard Square. This is the center of student life. And chances are you'll meet someone who knows someone who has extra space. The tree-lined streets of historic Cambridge. People have come here to teach, think, and write 
for 350 years. One of them was Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. He was the poet and Harvard professor who wrote, Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. Coming up later, the many faces of Boston. From the citadel of seemliness, Beacon Hill. To the baseball fans at Fenway Park. But first, time warp. Meet the Pilgrims. Travel, travel in Boston. A city that has much to offer the visitor within city limits and within a short drive. One of the most popular out-of-town destinations is Plymouth, less than an hour away by car. Some travelers take a day trip from Boston. Others stop on their way to Cape Cod. Why do they come? Well, it all has to do with some early American history preserved in this structure. This small but very important piece of American real estate is the accepted landing place of the Mayflower Pilgrims, Plymouth Rock, the Pilgrim's stepping stone to an uncertain new life in the new world. But did they really land here? It doesn't matter. The tourists flock here anyway. They also flock to the Mayflower, lovingly recreated in exquisite detail in this replica. Every American schoolchild knows the story of the pilgrims who came to the New World in search of religious freedom. Tourists chat with characters in costume. I wondered about the hardships of the voyage. Seaman William Smith filled me in. Oh, many of the passengers, I don't really think they were uh, the canoe and realized what they were uh, uh, up against in the evilness of the weathers. Uh, and many of them, I believe, had never even been on a ship. And I've never been on a ship this long before and traveled such far distance. And they have. It'd be worse for them. Well, don't you want to stay here in the New World? Well, I fancy it not, for I've only been here a number of months, and uh, I've already uh, uh, had uh, zundry bothers. And uh, what are we in the same latitude as Ben, two and forty degrees? Mm -hmm. And yet we were walking over snow in our canoes over parts of the land here. The people you brought here, do you think they're foolish? If they wish to uh, stay here, grand. But uh, I can know what side my bread is buttered on, for I be English and proud of it. Mm -hmm. I be born in England, and I'll die in England. The trip, back in time, continues at the Plymouth Plantation, a living museum that recreates the Pilgrim Settlement of 1627, complete with 17th century inhabitants. The cabbages, something has been eating at them, I fear. Recent research has shown that the clothes the settlers wore were not all blacks, whites, and grays, but were multicolored. Great care is taken to ensure the authenticity of every detail. I am content, Master. You'll find that we are people of sober cheerfulness, that we are moderate in all good things. Then we pray in the name of Jesus yeah. Christ, who's going to die for the sins of his elected saints. Amen. 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 Musketeers! By the battle mode! Make ready your piece to fire! Right, friends! Make the fire with Go, go, go! I was curious about life and love in the 17th century. This place is such a wild uh, and uncivilized and untamed place as it is. There is great uh, prosperity what can be out for here. Uh, but we are, well, that we have not had good English beef in some time, you know, nor beer all the year round. And there are some times that we are forced to have uh, uh, bread made out of Indian corn and not good English bread made out of wet and rye. What about good English girls? Well, I've got myself a gal, what I've been courting, and uh, now just betrothed, in truth, that we will be married for too long now. Uh, but uh, I am one of the more fortunate here. There has got to be at least uh, a score of lads, but uh, I ain't got much hope for the next couple of years, I think. Mm -hmm. Have you been to bed with her yet? La, uh, no, sir. Uh, that would be a thing most unseemly, uh, for fornication is a sin. Uh, and I could be whipped for it, uh, and fined, and uh, greatly admonished for it, certainly. Well, it might be worth it. 
er, mayhap such you might think it's worth a whipping, but I myself would much rather wait, uh, wait until it's legal, er, certainly. It's easy to get lost in time here. I found myself saying, Prithee, sir, remain mute whilst our artist manipulates his portrait machine. I was asking a tourist to be quiet while we filmed the scene. Interestingly enough, he understood perfectly. To get the most out of the experience, you really should talk to the characters. They'll make your visit to the Plymouth Plantation memorable. Coming up next, it's back to 20th century Boston and two famous sites, the common and the uncommon. The most famous bar in the world, Cheers. Dark and deep, but I have promises to keep, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. Somehow the words of Robert Frost come to mind here in the common. This is the heart of Boston. Ever since the founding of the city, this has been a green area. Cows were put to pasture here, it was a military training field, and more than one pirate was hanged here in the common. The Swan Boats in the Public Garden. One of Boston's best-known sites and the setting of the classic children's story, Make Way for Ducklings. Children still feed the ducks today, but sometimes their technique leaves a little to be desired. seen this facade on television. No, this is not Cheers, but this Boston pub inspired the television series. This is the Bull and Finch on Beacon Street. Only the exterior was filmed here. This interior is quite different from the Hollywood set you see on TV. Expect long lineups. You won't find Norm or Woody here, but they will be pleased to sell you a sweatshirt for $26. Bull and Finch is popular because sometimes you just want to go where everyone knows your name. In this city, loyalty to neighborhood institutions runs deep. The Irish influence remains strong. This was John F. Kennedy's hometown. His legacy is preserved at the John F. Kennedy Library. The Italian community is another ingredient in Boston's ethnic melting pot. It is a city with a very rich uh, and long uh, history of cultural and ethnic diversity. And it's a manageable city. It's a great city to walk in. Uh, I walk often from my house in Roxbury to my church in the south end of Boston and from my church in the south end of Boston to downtown. But don't be embarrassed if you lose your way. It happens even to lifelong residents. And no wonder. There is a north end, but no north Boston. There is a south end and a south Boston. There is a west end, but it's in the north. And there's no west Boston. There's an east Boston, but no east end. Whichever neighborhood you choose to explore, remember, Boston is a great walking city. The best way to get around in Boston is on foot. Don't use a car. Driving here is impossible. Every visitor wants to discover this neighborhood, home to proper Bostonians. This is Beacon Hill. The State House. Dating from 1798, it is the seat of the Massachusetts government. Its golden dome dominates Beacon Hill. Although it's right downtown, the district has an elegance all its own, with the serene feel of a small town. The architecture has the charm of an earlier era. One of the highlights of Beacon Hill is the Nichols House. Beacon Hill, 
a legendary neighborhood known around the world. This is Boston. It's good, Cat. It sucks, Gregory. And this also is Boston, the venerable Fenway Park on a Saturday afternoon, a real slice of Americana. This is one of the smallest stadiums in baseball, and one of the oldest. The opening of Fenway Park in 1912 was pushed off the front pages by the sinking of the Titanic, but it's seldom been out of the news since then. Babe Ruth pitched here many innings ago, and Ted Williams played his entire career here, and the crowds are still coming. This is baseball as it was meant to be played, on real grass. Boston fans are traditionalists. When the electronic scoreboard was introduced in the 70s, it was booed. Fenway is intimate. Fans are right on top of the action. I asked one, what makes Fenway special? I think it's such a great tradition. It's, it's just a symbol of Boston. Uh, Boston's a theater town, but it's also a sports town, and people, people really find it to be a really wonderful place to go to see a ball game. It took 10 innings, but the Red Sox won this game in style. Bostonians have much to celebrate, a city that has renewed itself without forgetting its rich heritage. Bostonians can celebrate a new liveliness that would make a Puritan blush. And let's hope they get a chance to celebrate a pennant soon. I'm Don McGowan in Boston, where you can see and hear the Boston Pops in all its glory every 4th of July. Now that's a celebration. They're vicious, violent rowdies with a really bad attitude. They're gremlins. A BB Cation, Zach Gallagher star in the Boston's movie of the Lafayette same name. Swiss 2008, on great movies. They're ready to dance on the electric Swiss circus next. Lafayette Swiss Hotel, where you want to be. Swiss hospitality and impeccable service in the heart of downtown Boston. Ground transportation provided by Budget Rent-A-Car and Truck. You always get a better deal at Budget. Canada's largest short-term car and truck rental company, with over 300 locations across Canada to serve you. Air transportation provided by Delta, the only airline offering Montreal to Boston jet service five times daily. At Delta, we love to fly, and it shows. Don McGowan's wardrobe, exclusively by Henry Marks, in Montreal on Drummond Street and Westmount Square. For more information about Boston, please write to Travel Travel, 405 Ogilvy Avenue, Montreal, Quebec, Canada, H3N1M4. Please allow four to six weeks for delivery.